Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to talk about five interview questions that every developer should know. So, um, I've been in already quite a few uh, interviews already and uh, some questions do come more often than others and uh, I just wanted to show you some, some of the questions that I do get a lot and some people they think that they are like really basic but if you, if you think well, you think that you know these questions, but uh, they are not so easy as they seem. So, question number one is, um, what are your favorite features of HTML5 and CSS3? So, <laughs> this question is really, really tricky because I know so many people that they say like, oh, I am coding uh, HTML5 and CSS3 but they are just saying this because they read this everywhere else they don't know what, what are really the new features of uh, HTML5 and CSS3 what, what are the new features that they have because they just say this oh I code this uh, because this is what they learn to say everywhere so this is kind of a kind of question that the recruiters usually do to see if you are really a passionate person about uh, web development because if you are doing this and you don't know what are the new features it means that you are not up to date with the, the news regarding the web development so um, this question for example you, you could say that for HTML5 you have, um, you have new elements like uh, a header nav, uh, footer, um, yeah, you, you have a, a bunch of new elements available in HTML5 that they were not available before. Uh, you have as well, like now you, you can use um, scalable vector graphics and uh, canvas as well on HTML5. You have new uh, elements for audio and video that you, you can embed in your uh, website with HTML. So this is like just some examples of new features of uh, HTML5 that you could point out in this kind of question. Uh, for um, CSS3, you could say for example that now you can use uh, media queries like to change uh, how the, the style of your website is uh, responding to different uh, uh, devices, screen devices, yeah. Uh, you can uh, you can say that uh, CSS3 now has uh, animations that before they were not available. You have uh, the CSS, CSS box model as well. Um, yeah, and many other things. This is just something like to for you to be aware of that this seems like such a <laughs> such a simple question. But in reality, it's just like uh, to see if you really know what are like the new features of these technologies. It's not just saying, oh, I'm coding HTML5 and CSS3, and then you don't really know what are the new features of it. So, yeah, this is just, just for you guys to know and be prepared if you have this kind of question that for sure will happen. So, question number two. I also have this question quite a lot. Is like... Uh, can you describe your workflow when you are creating a web page? The recruiters they want to know how do you create a web page? Like how do you start and how do you finish? What kind of um, languages do you use? Uh, frameworks, libraries. So uh, I, I'll just give you an example of my my workflow. Usually I start with um, a Photoshop mockup and. Um, from there, I just start to, to code the, the page itself. I start with the HTML and then I'll add some CSS. Uh, I, 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 I forgot to mention I use Sublime. They also want to know what kind of code editor you use. I use Sublime. Um, I will, uh, after I have the HTML and CSS uh, there, I will use um, uh, JavaScript if I need to. I will put my JavaScript on the bottom of the page so that the page can uh, load faster. I will make sure that my images they are optimized so they are not like too, too big uh, files so the page can load faster as well. I will um, 
minify my uh, CSS files and JavaScript files, which means it's like removing all the white spaces that we don't really need, so the files can load much quicker as well. This is all, all for the page speed improvement. Um, what, what else? Uh, when I finish my project, I'll make sure my my code is uh, according to the W3 standards. And uh, yeah, when I finish as well, I um, I make sure that my my website is working well on all kinds of uh, browsers and devices. Like it has to be working on Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, all the same. And uh, make sure that my website, of course, is responsive to be working on desktop, tablets, and uh, mobile phones. So yeah, this is like my basic like workflow. Uh, they just want to know the recruiters when they ask you this kind of question just uh, <laughs> basically how do you work and what steps do you take and everything so for question number three can you tell me the difference between CSS resetting and CSS normalizing so <laughs> for sure you have heard about these terms CSS resetting and CSS normalizing and um, so CSS resetting is just like a way that you are going to, uh, if you notice like when you, when you um, have a h1 header or a paragraph or something, the browsers, they will do by default, they will give them some uh, paddings, margins, you, you are not adding this but the, the browser adds it uh, automatically, so the CSS resetting, it removes all of these kind of uh, Paddings, margins, and uh, yeah, these kind of markups that they add automatically and just removes everything so you can add your own. So, th this will be the CSS resetting. So, uh, about CSS normalizing is to make sure all the, the um, HTML elements they render the same way consistently in all browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, everything. So to make sure they have like the same padding, same margins and everything. So yeah, this is like another tricky question that some people, they think they know and uh, yeah, just for you guys to be aware of. So for question number four, can you tell me the difference between inline, inline block and block elements? So, for this question, I'm going to show you this example here now. So, here is a um, simple example of how the inline, inline block and block displays, of how they work, yeah? So, we have a uh, um, div in here with some text inside and we have here a word center is that is wrapped in a span so this this word in here is where we're going to test our displays in line in line block and block so we have this div in here that i put some um, some styles here in the top just going to move this down a bit okay so we have this div with the background color of uh, light blue some border some width and margin top and we have our span that we want to test so first let's test the display inline I'm gonna save this oops just like open in browser okay so here it is here is our div and here is our span that I gave a background, a white background and some border so you guys so you guys can see how how does it look like. So let's give this inline some this inline element some height 50 pixels for example. Let's save this, refresh the page, and as you guys can see, nothing happens. An inline element, if you try to give it some height. It doesn't accept it okay let's try now for example with a width of 100 pixels let's save refresh the page and as you can see nothing happens as well so let's try now some margins 
so margin top margin right margin bottom and margin left all 10 pixels let's see how it what what happens in here okay so we can see that the inline element only accepts like margin left and margin right properties yeah so you can't style this here with a margin top and margin uh, bottom so let's try finally some padding okay yeah as you can see we have padding on the top on the bottom left and right so resuming an uh, inline element doesn't allow you to to put some to display some height to style it with some height some width doesn't allow you as well it only allows you just move this together it only allows you to give it a margin right and left and it doesn't accept the margin top and bottom but you can still give it some paddings everywhere okay just, just for you guys to see once more, how does it look like? He accepts margin left, margin right, doesn't accept margin top and bottom, doesn't accept if you put some um, height or width, and finally it accepts all the padding that you want to, to, to use it in there. So let's try now some inline block element. Let's move all this tile down. Okay, so initially this is how an uh, inline block element displays. Let's do this again and give it a height of 50 pixels. Okay, we can see now that the inline block element accepts that you, you can give it uh, a style of um, a height of 50 pixels, I mean. let's do some width now there you go we have now a width of 100 pixels let's try now with these margins there you go he accepts margins everywhere as you can see and finally let's try these paddings save this refresh and again we have like padding everywhere on the top right and bottom so a uh, inline block elements it allows allows you to put some height width give margin everywhere and padding everywhere it also allows this is like the inline block element allows other elements like you see this one allow other elements to sit around it so he only takes the space that he actually needs it so if we try now an uh, inline uh, uh, just a block block element I mean let's save so a block element is exactly the same as an inline block it accepts that you give it a height a width padding margin all around but the block element it will take all the width of the parent element so the parent element of this uh, span is this div you can see the the background color color all around but since this span we we put it as a display block it will take the full width of the parent element so it doesn't allow all other elements to be around it I hope this was uh, clear for you guys if you still have any questions just let me know in the comments down below and yeah let's go for the other questions now okay and finally for the last question can you please describe me the CSS box model so again I'm gonna show you uh, one example so you you can understand it better Alright guys, so in here we have the CSS box model and as we can see from this top image in here we have our content 
the padding we have the border after and the last one it will be the margin so this is the CSS box model I have here like two examples just to show you in here we have a div with some text inside here and so this text in here is basically the content and we can see there is a, a space between this content this text and the border of this div you see this is the border and we have some space here on the top on the right on the bottom and on the on the left this will be the padding just as in here in this example here on the top you can see better and we have this border which comes after the padding and finally we have our margin if you can see in here there is some margin here on the left in here this line in here this dashed line is like an imaginary line so you can see that after the border we have like a margin right and in here we have another div with a more thick border and also a margin left in here so yeah this is a uh, this is like the css box model guys i hope you you understood this if you have any questions just let me know and let's go to the next question Okay guys, so this was the five questions that I decided to share with you that uh, they are very popular questions that you can get in an interview and uh, if you are applying for a front-end web developer position you should really know and uh, I hope these questions and answers are useful to you let me know if you like this video leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like this and I'll see you next time